Today in the news we got some juicy info on the next generation of AMD CPUs and GPUs. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Before that, let me take a quick second to thank our sponsor, Keysfan. Keysfan.com is where you can save money and buy inexpensive keys for Windows 10 Pro, Windows 11 Pro, or Office 2021. You can get your license with the link down below. Just click Add to Cart, enter the code BSV50 to get the best deal possible and submit your order using PayPal. That's it. Thanks, Keysfan. So, AMD just had their financial analyst day today and they just spoiled us with a ton of information for all of their upcoming products. So let's get into some of it. First, there's the uh, entire core architecture roadmap. AMD basically gave us a list of architectures that are going to be uh, released in some way in the next two and a half years. We got Zen 4, obviously, Zen 4 Vcash, interesting, but we'll get back to that soon, and Zen 4C. That Zen 4 generation will be utilizing TSMC's 5 and 4 nanometer process. Past that, there's also Zen 5, Zen 5 Vcash, and Zen 5C. Those, on the other hand, would be using the 4 and 3 nanometer process nodes from TSMC. Going back to Zen 4 though, Mark Papermaster answered a question that was on everybody's mind about the next generation architecture. What are the instructions per clock, aka the IPC gains? Well, their testing found 8 to 10%. This wasn't just Cinebench though. This was thoroughly tested with Spec into 2017, Cinebench, and Geekbench. This means that this number is fairly final. Add to that the insane clocks that we saw during the last event, and it's a pretty healthy boost in performance, if you ask me. In fact, AMD claims over a 25% improvement in performance per watt compared to Zen 3, and over a 35% increase in their Cinebench multi-threaded score. They also talked about the next generation of mobile APUs. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago, but it's now official. Zen 4 APUs, codenamed Phoenix Point, will come with RDNA 3 graphics. Not only that, but it will be based on the 4 nanometer process node. Unfortunately, there was no mention of the beefier Dragon Range APUs yet, but AMD did confirm that it would come, so we'll just have to wait and see for that. Zen 5 mobile APUs, on the other hand, would have RDNA 3 Plus graphics. Both of these would feature AI extensions. AMD did confirm that we're going to see 3D Vcache return in the Ryzen lineup with Zen 4. No word on how it's going to be implemented, like if we're getting a complete lineup or just a single chip like we had with the uh, 5800X 3D, but at least we know that it will be back. Threadripper is also coming back for Ryzen 7000, so that's great for people who need an insane amount of PCIe lanes and cores. I think that that's pretty much it on the uh, CPU front. If we move to the GPU front, we got our first hint from AMD at what RDNA 3 is capable of. And this third generation looks like it's going to make another splash. Their projected performance per watt increase for RDNA 3 is once again over 50%. Remember, that was their goal too with RDNA 2 and they surpassed it. That's kind of insane, especially given the current power consumption numbers and rumors that we've been hearing for the RX 7000 series. That essentially means that to reach 6900 XT levels of performance, the chip would just have to be using under 200 watts. That's right between a 6700 and 6700 XT in terms of power consumption. So those rumors about the uh, Navi 33 chip or the 7600 XT that would have 6900 XT levels of performance, well, those rumors and leaks are getting more and more concrete. According to AMD's own slide, that performance increase would be due to, of course, the better process node at five nanometers, the new chiplet design, which has finally been confirmed, the re-architected compute units. This is probably what is going to double the amount of stream processors, and of course, a better optimized graphics pipeline and the next generation of Infinity Cache. We also got confirmation that it's coming this year, although probably not the entire lineup at the same time as we've been hearing for a while now. Current rumors state that uh, the first one to come out would be Navi 33, so that's the 7600 XT, then followed up by the Navi 31, so that's the highest end, so 7900 XT, 7800 XT, and 7800, and then after that, Navi 32, which should be the 7700 and 7700 XT GPUs. So yeah, that's pretty much it for AMD's financial analyst day. Uh, let me know down below what was the most exciting part for you. Are you looking forward more to Zen 5 or Zen 4, maybe the 3D V? Cash with Zen 4? Let me know down below. 
Moving on, we've got our free game check. Now, we're about a month away from uh, Shark Week, but for some reason, Epic Games decided that uh, now was the time to have Man Eater for free on their stores. Basically, in this game, you start as a baby shark and you eat your way through life. It's a mature game, so if you like limbs being pulled apart in games, well, you'll probably be satisfied. This game will be available until next Thursday. And if you happen to have an Amazon Prime membership, well, you can get a couple of good games for free. Among the most popular are Far Cry 4 and WRC 8. There's also a game that came out in 2000 from LucasArts. So if you're into uh, retro PC gaming, there's that for you too. These games are available until the end of this month. In any case, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment. If you want to talk about today's stories, as usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. I still haven't changed the water that's in there. So that's what, five, six days? Should I? Nah, not this time. Take care. It's all the same, all the pain, all the blame, and it's on me. I became all the things that I didn't want to be.